have some fun today with our book that we're going to read. And today we're going to be reading a book um, that is called, well, let me move it over here so you can take a look at it. My teacher likes to say. Now I'm sure you have a lot of things that you remember that I say a lot in the classroom. Like for example, I say like, holy guacamole when something really amazing happens. And I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I say and you're actually going to be recording some of those at the end of our reading today. And so in our book today that we're going to be reading, I'm going to read you this little introduction page here because we're going to be learning about a fun type of figurative language language that we didn't get to learn about when we were talking about poems, okay? So I'm going to move myself over here so I can make this page as big as possible for us. Oops, but then I just turned the page. Um, okay, so it says, what comes to mind when you hear the expression, all eyes on me? I used to imagine plucking my eyes out along with my classmates and putting them on the table. Yikes! Of course, she didn't actually want our eyeballs. She was asking for our attention. And when she would say, excuse me, I have a frog in my throat, the whole class would giggle and I'd wonder how it got there. My favorite, though, was when she says, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Those funny and confusing expressions are called um, idioms. There are thousands of them in the English language and they come from many different sources. Some of them are repeated so often that they lose their importance, while others provide some of life's most valuable lessons. If you listen closely to your teacher, you may hear her using some of those expressions. And it's okay if you don't understand them now. You will someday. Until then, we're going to have some fun and use our imagination to learn some, okay? So we're going to be taking a look at this book today. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to move myself back up in the corner. And at the end, I'm going to show you a really fun activity that you guys are going to get to do in Seesaw with it, okay? It says, does your teacher ever say things that are quite amusing? Does your teacher ever say things that can be a bit confusing? My teacher says some funny things like, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, don't beat around the bush, and a watch pot never boils. She tells me that I'm as sharp as a tack. Please tell me what this means. Sometimes she says I'm as smart as a whip and she thinks I'm full of beans. She often says the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and, but I have no idea what that has to do with me. My teacher doesn't know this, but I have a small confession. I love the things my teacher says, every sweet and odd expression. And so some of these you may have heard before. Um, I know I've heard sharp as a tack, which basically means you're really smart, right? You're sharp means you're smart as a tack, which is sharp that you put into the wall. So that's an idiom. And so we're going to keep on going. So this one says, do you have ants in your pants? My teacher likes to say, I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. When I have ants in my pants, I squirm and I wiggle and I shout. I jump up and down and I twist around so my arm until the ants fall um, in my pants fall out. Now, I've heard ants in your pants as well. And this is a very classic idiom. And basically when I say you have ants in your pants, it's like when you can't stop wiggling and squirming in class. And this kid is actually thinking he has ants stuck in his pants. This one. Two heads are better than one. My teacher likes to say, I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. I suppose she's right. A second head could come in rather handy, except for when I have a treat. Which mouth would get the candy? And so when two heads are better than one, that means like teamwork is better than just having one person and you can maybe get things done faster or have a second opinion on something. Put on your thinking cap, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. I wish I had a thinking cap that did my math for me. I'd wear it during science and have every spelling be. So when we say put on your thinking cap, which I know I do say, it doesn't mean an actual cap. It just means get your brain ready to learn. Please button your lip, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. I'd have to ask my mom to sew a button on my lip. Maybe she'll add, um, instead of zipper, I could zip. So please button your lips. That's kind of like when you close your lips and like tell a secret. So basically it just means like, let's not talk right now. 
In our next idiom, the early bird gets the worm, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. If that's what you get when you're early, then I guess I'd rather be late because an ooey gooey squishy worm doesn't sound that great. And an early worm gets the, or early bird gets the worm basically just means you should be on time. It's always good to get up early. Go after the day. Carpe diem. I'm as hungry as a bear. My teacher likes to say, I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. When our teacher's really hungry, um, he gets a beastly scowl, but we know he's just a teddy bear because we've never heard him growl. And so this idiom is actually a simile. I'm as hungry as a bear. So when you say that, you're saying you are super duper hungry. You're not actually a bear, but you could eat as much as a bear could because that's how hungry you are. Stick together, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what it means, but I like it anyway. The duct tape didn't work, so we used some super glue, and now we stick together like our teacher told us to. So stick together, I like to say that too on field trips. It's just mean just stay by people in your group, not actually tie yourselves together. The next one, the pin is mightier than the sword, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. I fought a monster in our room as the class cheered and roared. I won because I used my pin and he only had his sword. Now this one, I like this one, the pin is mightier than the sword, which basically means using your words and writing for a purpose can be stronger than using violence. This was a, a good one. And then this one is, every dog has its day, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. Today will be my dog's day. He hasn't had his turn. How to be the teacher's pet, the class is going to learn. Huh. And the dog's on the chalkboard. Uh -huh. Homework, get rid of all cats. <gasps> Never. And so every dog has his day means we all can't have turns all the time, but everyone will have a chance to be a center of attention. Then these walls have ears, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. Some cars are big, some, ear, or some ears are big, some ears are small. Who cleans the ears that are on the walls? And so these walls have ears just basically means that your teacher is always listening to you. Um, I, my mom would always say she has eyes in the back of her head, and then she would always know what was going on. Great oaks from little acorns grow. My teacher likes to say, I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. If a little a tiny acorn can become a giant tree, then I can hardly wait oh no. uh, to see what I will be. No more monkey business, my teacher likes to say. I'm not sure what she means, but I like it anyway. We did what our teacher, teacher told us and we hung the sign today. We're going out of business and now we get to play. So remember, monkey business is like messing around, not taking it seriously. My teacher says so many things that have... Um, that have a special way of making me feel good inside and brightening up my day. So when the teacher says, I will miss you, and I'm very proud of you, I really hope my teacher knows I'm going to miss her too. The end. And so first grade, I wanted this to be one of our last read-alouds of the year because I want us to reflect on the power of our words and how we can use our words to help encourage other people and we can encourage others in our class. And I know that I say a lot of things in the classroom to try to show you that I am proud of you and that I'm proud of all of your hard work. And so what you're gonna do in Seesaw today, it's kind of a funny activity. So you are going to be taking a look and I've uploaded into Seesaw a whole bunch of pictures of myself. And you can choose your favorite Miss Arbuckle picture and then you're going to, in the speech bubble, write something that I said a lot of in first grade, okay? And so you can either use the pencil tool or you can use the T, which is the labeling tool, to type in 
what I say a lot of in first grade in room 105. So these are the pictures you can choose from. You can do one picture, you can do two pictures, you can do all the pictures, but you have to do at least one of the pictures, okay? So here is Max and Handel. Here I am max, maxed up riding my bike. Oh, another bike picture. Oh, where, where's the picture on this one? Hmm. Hold on one second. I don't want to know what happened. Oh, there we go. Let's try that again, first grade. I want you to see the goofy pictures. Okay. So we have bike picture, bike picture. We have outdoor garden picture and Miss Arbuckle with Max picture. Oh, so cute, Max. And Miss Arbuckle, oh, another bike picture. We have Miss Arbuckle with Handel, oh, so cute, Handel. And in the classroom, and Max and Handel. So you are going to choose which of those you would like to make a speech bubble of things that I say a lot in first grade, and you can choose more than one, okay? So I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. So have a lovely day, first grade.